Did not the sacred gong sound the final note which completes the marriage ceremony? <whistles> Great God, Teo is displeased! <laughs> Good evening, goblins and ghouls, and welcome to the Wednesday Night Scream Stream Minisodes. I'm your host, Spake and Stein, joined as always by my very good friend, Mr. Evan Sink. How good. we doing tonight, Evan? Yeah, sorry. I don't I'm I normally good. say how we doing tonight, Evan, and I just didn't say now. Uh, <laughs> just all of a sudden, I'm just like losing my footing here in the in the first 15 seconds of the show. Look at that. That's yeah, throwing some curveballs tonight. Yeah, it's that's you know what it sounds like? It sounds like some stark treachery. Uh no, Ooh. we'll yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Well the little tease for tonight's yes, episode of Rash Gordon Silarn. I cracked to Evan and that's the medical film version of, of Flash Gordon that they did, but we won't get to see a trailer for that, unfortunately. Um Yes, yes. Keep making up weight-related Frankenstein monikers for me, Silarn. I'm sure you could come up with about twenty, and uh, I, I think you need to hold yourself to that. Um, 
but yes, I hope I hope everybody's doing well out there. I hope Evan, I hope you're doing well again. Sorry for sorry for cutting you off. I hope uh hope that your week's been going well and um you're you're kicking back and relaxing all cool. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, you know I always uh, just kick back and kind of coast on the the back half of the week and it's hump day. Right. So. Yep. So it's so you're 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 pretty much checked out for Thursday right, and Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think I've put in enough work. Yeah, that's you. You're basically in three days getting a whole week's work done. Those other two days are just just time to stretch your legs, right? Um. Ha ha, Silarn. Yes, yes. Keep it up. Let's, uh, let's keep up with the, you know, with the Razzes. Raz stream over here. Just razzing <laughs> me to death with all the, all the, yes, yes, we get it. If I kick back, my chair will break. Ha 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 ha. Keep them coming, Silarn. Um, <laughs> I love it. So. We we have, we have uh, one person in the audience, and uh, he won't stop heckling. <laughs> and he won't stop. Yeah, it's just the the uh, uh, stage comedian's worst nightmare is it's the club only has one person in it, and that person has no problem heckling the shit out of you. That's that's what Silarn is for for our show. He's our resident heckler, and he does a pretty good job of it. If I say I do say so myself, as the target of most of his heckles, I think I think you do a very good job, Silarn. So thank you for joining us, Silarn. Uh, I hope you're excited for our penultimate installment of Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. This public domain sci-fi serial that we have been watching for the past 10 weeks we're now on chapter 11 no thank you Silarn. from us to you thank you um nobody's more thankful of you than i am no 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 um we'll we'll continue this debate Silarn. uh believe you me now we are here for f this title of tonight's episode the earlier tease stark treachery see that i rem i got the episode's title this time i didn't have to ask you evan yeah look at you Mr. For prepared out of out of 10 weeks finally by week 11 i'm i'm yeah like Finally, the host knows what we're watching. Finally, know what we're watching. It's it's stark treachery. Uh, could I tell you what happened last time? No, I think I, I think had to get a refresher too. Oh, uh, well, definitely. How, how can we forget the uh, the the dummy falling off of the the castle battlements? Mm. The, uh, the the gas bombs. That Thank they were you, Evan. Dropping. I totally forgot about all that. That was. Look at you, very good memory, sir. You're, you, you must be enthralled uh, in the in this in this this final hour that we've got of Flash Gordon Conquers yeah, well, the Universe. I, I, I definitely remember it and didn't uh, just give myself a little refresher. Oh, the okay. oh, okay, great. No, that's good because because you have to watch it like the kids did in the theaters back in the day, and you can't. You're never gonna rewatch re it ever. This you catch last week's installment, or you know you're out. You don't. You're never gonna see it ever again. Um, if you're a kid in 1940, that was the. <laughs> That's the case if you're watching this. You you only get one. That's it. It's not like now, very privileged now, that we can watch a thing over and over and over again. That, uh... What? Top Gun? I don't... I don't... Silarn. Silarn's over here. Ranting and Raven. Uh... Yeah, no. Uh, which one of us gets to be Top Gun? Evan is oh, the I'm Top Gun. gun? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, that you makes sense. I'm, I'm kind of the the Top Gun of movies. Remi oh yeah, that's right. You have the hat. Yep, that's yeah. true. I forgot about that. How they how could I? Those, they only give those out if uh, if you're you know the Top Gun. Right, 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 right. How could I forget? Yeah. 
where is the hat? Yes, it's no, it's Evan's Top Gun hat is not cursed. Unlike our stream, uh, it's not cursed. It is, I hope. Uh, you haven't done anything to get your hat cursed, have you, Evan? I, I, I don't think so, but uh, I mean, cursed hat does that, that, that does sound kind of interesting. Yes, yes. Maybe it's... I should get it cursed. Yeah, again, if you're if, if you're a if you're a what we do in the shadows fan, you know that it's it's very fashionable to have a cursed hat. It's a very desired item. Yeah, uh, very in in vogue right now. Very in vogue. Uh, it's like high fashion. We're all we're about all the latest trends here. I mean, we all know about Fresh Rogan's Sloom armband. And if you don't know, you can go look on our Twitter, and you can see the side by side. With Fresh's beautiful slum armband, you can say slum if you want, but I, I'm I'm partial towards pronouncing it the way I think the Swedish would pronounce it. You think they would say slum, slum station? It, it, it sounds it sounds good to me. It sounds it makes it sound like a like a uh, like an expensive clothes label, which is I think what we're going for. Yeah, I think so. Cause slum, I mean, that's very you know. Sh yeah, living in the shanty slum the shanty slum the shanty slum shanty slum yes shanty slum yes that's i'm all for pronouncing it that way it definitely sounds very fancy so that's that'll be our contribution to to high fashion it's the slum line but we'll get there we're not we're not quite up to to building our our clothing brand you know getting having, that up uh, and running uh, just yet but, fashion show right yes wait did you say first fashion show or cursed fashion I show said, <laughs> no, i said cursed <laughs> okay good great that's perfect yes right. i think a cursed fashion show would be amazing that would be so much yeah. fun or I should be more specific. It's a fashion show, but all the clothes are cursed. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, uh, who knows uh, what, what, what that would happen there? That would be an exciting fashion show, without a doubt. I don't think that you can, I don't think you can question that at all. Invisible cursed clothing. Well, I don't know about that, Silarn. I think that, um, <laughs> I think the curse is just the fact that it's invisible and that's it. It's you're cursing everybody else to have to look at your, you know, your fat, fat body, Silarn. Gotcha. Gotcha back. It's not really getting you back if I just call you fat. It's not really very creative, but I don't have the mental bandwidth to come up with, with witty things to call you right now. I'm, I'm so lasered in on these last these last precious moments that we have watching Flash Gordon constantly evade death at the hands of Ming the Merciless. And we have... Yeah, I'd really like to know how he gets out of this one. He did just fall, like, three stories. I'm going to guess that other guy broke his fall, you know? We're yeah, going to okay. see, we're gonna see like, the two dummies fall behind a rock, <laughs> and then Flash <laughs> is just going to tumble out from behind the rock and onto his feet, and and he's going to run and on to the next thing, as so these serials have transpired. It's just... Right. We'll just move right past him. Leap and about. bound right out of danger and and right into solving the problem. It is, it is never failed. No, Siler, nobody, nobody wants to see. Yes, your lap hog and your invisible cursed clothing down the runway. That's not anybody's idea of a fun fashion show. It's at least you know, unless the, there's somehow a curse that involves then everybody else's clothes turns invisible. Then it's like the literalization of that picture: everybody naked. And then the curse is that everybody's clothes, and then everybody's technically na naked. Then that would be, that'd be a fun curse, you know. But other than that, I, I just don't think, I don't see the practicality in it, Silar. And I just, I don't know. I, I I appreciate you pitching that for the fashion show. We'll we'll get back to you on that. 
<laughs> we'll be in touch, right? Uh, Evan, Evan has your number. <laughs> you, you guys ever, um, you know, like when you get a spider web, like you walk through a spider web, you can't see it, but you feel it. <gasps> yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of how I imagine wearing an invisible shirt would be. Oh, it would be. Oh, I couldn't. I'd just be like picking at it the whole it, time. Feel, it's, it's like uh, 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 in just like a like a net of spider web yes Cylon, it's it's deep in our souls uh and right. well, the the uh the 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 spite the shirt is made of uh spider silk and the spider is also cursed and also invisible that makes sense that's a just spy of co spiders are cursed that's yeah that that's where the clothes up. Uh, it all makes yeah. sense. Okay, yeah. I see it. That's there we go. That's why we don't make clothes out of spider silk. <laughs> ah, because they would be cursed. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, that makes sense. I totally get that. Yes. That's that's words of wisdom here on the scream stream you that's the old age wisdom that's been lost to time that we're bringing back here this is why we don't have clothes made of spider silk um yeah we're we're bringing back some good old folksy folk wisdom uh in which everything we don't know or don't understand is just cursed right Right. I think that's the most logical way to handle anything that you don't understand. Uh, it's You say it's evil. You say it's from the devil. You say that uh, demons are involved. You know, whatever. What, whatever just gets you away from the real issue and just to some, some you know some some kind of easy explanation that you don't have to think too much about right cursed curses that's all you need to know right a no, tan uh, i'm i'm liking silarn's idea here I, a, a tanning, tanning shop for <laughs> a tanning shop for insect leather silarn what the hell that would be very time consuming, I would think. Wouldn't you think? It's so much little, yeah, that's, like that's high fashion. That is high fashion. A lot of a lot of money though that I think those clothes would cost. Think of all the that's all the intricate tools that you need to be able to handle insect leather. Yeah, I'm sure it's arduous, Cylon. My goodness. We we've turned into fashion stream here tonight, if you're just tuning in. It's it's all fashion all the time here even though you're seeing scream stream at the top of your screen don't be fooled we are solely focused on the latest in haunted and cursed fashions and um insect leather is the hot new item uh but it's it's mostly cursed so it's something that you need to be aware of before you delve into the the world of of insect leather it's to be aware of the of the dangers of high fashion and i think flash gordon has learned that in in our serial if anything else when you hang out with people that dress like they're in robin hood all the time you, you're guaranteed to not be on the winning team uh because that fashion is just outdated you gotta get a you gotta get you gotta get, I mean, look at Ming, look at Ming and the fashion of the, the people of his merciless kingdom. That's high yeah, fashion. If anybody's, if anybody's wearing insect leather, it's uh merciless Ming. Without a doubt, you know that he springs the extra penny just to have that sweet, sweet, um, you know, spider silk, uh, Kate. He's got the spider silk shirt. He's got the uh, the ant leather pants. Maybe, <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe a hat made from uh, moth feathers. Ooh, wow, that would be very soft. Yes, yeah. looks good in the light. Dusty. Yeah, that very dusty. Yeah, this is true. Yes, uh, I mean, I I think we're in agreement here that if if there was a fashion war. 
if the, or if the fashion police showed up and there was, you know, if we're judging Ming the Merciless or Flash Gordon, I think the winner is Ming the Merciless. I think if the, if, if the, if the fate of the universe, if the conqueror of the universe who is determined by fashion, Ming wins hands down, I think. I just, you know, I mean, Flash yeah, certainly. How come these, how come these uh, uh, fights of good and evil never just come down to a fashion show? It should because it's not like Flash isn't trying. It's not like Flash wears the same thing every time. Flash is constantly changing his outfits. So he obviously wants to make fashion a part of his whole thing too, just like Ming. So it's obviously integral to their whole rivalry, their whole protagonist antagonist dynamic but i think he just i think ultimately he doesn't hold a candle to you know ming's probably got so many sweatshops that are just constantly churning out outfits that he he look at and be like no yes yes no too much ant leather there this is just my legs my meaty thighs don't fit into these ant leather pants i think we're gonna have to go with who is something a little more uh, let's see if we can maybe find some some cockroach skin pants. I don't know. It's maybe something a little more durable. Um, you know, that's that's Ming for you. Ming's, Ming's a fashionista. I think that's what we're. I think that's what it comes down to. No, this isn't about my meaty thighs, Silarn. Yes, I admit. I know. Yes, I do have meaty thighs, but that's not that's not a topic of discussion for the scream stream. That's off limits. We're we That's, are uh, scream stream after hours. Scream stream after dark, and yeah. cue saxophone music here. And <laughs> if Fresh was here, then that's where you know. Although I'm I'm in a hundred percent now. I think that he needs one of those. I figured out what those those machines are. What those pianos organs are that uh, New Joe has. It's called a a photo player and they had mm. them for silent movies and it's got like you know train whistle wind whistle you know <laughs> s like uh, symbol crash like all these uh, you know i watched i went down the rabbit hole today and watching a, a guy really play one of those and it was does it sound any different than uh it's exactly the same I really wanted him to have a bunch of plates that he could throw down and break. And so that's what I, I really want fresh to basically just invest in one of those. And, uh, we'll be, we'll be in business. Buy a bunch of plates. Yeah. And just a bunch of plates. I just love the chaos, man. You just, that, that's, that was one of my favorite stories about, um, and this is totally unrelated to anything we're talking about tonight, but I'm going to go into it real quick anyway. Uh, on the set of Animal House, the the movie, the director had a habit of just like throwing things at actors in the middle of, of scenes when they were like mid take. And so like, and it's in the finished movie where like actors are like catching things or or like, you know, bottles, like glass bottles hitting walls and like smashing. And it's just kind of... Who's directing? Tim Heidecker? Uh, well, actually, it makes sense. No, it's John Landis who killed a guy, but that's a whole other... But no, he, oh, okay. No, legally, he did... Legally, he was found innocent, so I can't say he... It was he allegedly... He, but he, you know, it was... That was a whole thing. Yes, <laughs> that's what he did. In that case, he threw a helicopter at some at a, a man and two children, and it didn't end well for anybody. Um, but John Landis, so that's why you know John Landis isn't really a good guy. To, you know, ha I just had to go down that that uh, that fun fact, um, you know, trail. But of course, it leads to John Landis being a. Uh, being a murderer he's not necessarily a good guy um in this day and age um you know dangerous director this is why you have uh rules uh, like you can't make a movie without breaking a few eggs 
Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh. <laughs> that's where we need the bottom. Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, man. Uh, it's, yeah. So, fortunately, movie making movies is not a, not, um, an easy thing if you're not being careful. And, and I'm sure on Flash Gordon with some of these stunts involved for these cliffhangers that they tested those boundaries plenty of times. So, um, and and certainly for, as Evan said, the end of the last episode, the stunt that we saw, we're going to see if they've got any kind of, you know, it's always fun. It's always fun to track where the stunt actors end and a dummy begins. And then when the stunt actor comes back in or the regular actor comes back in, it's always fun the way that they shoot and cut that and, you know, perform that. So, um, it's with the, the the cliffhanger it's like uh, you know it's good for your ending but it's also good for your next beginning cuz it just you know gives you something oh my god i just did you oh excuse me that was the the nastiest burp i've ever burped in in a minute and i just did it right into my microphone my apologies my condolences uh, <laughs> it's where I need a plate. I have my mug right here, but I can't. I, you know, not gonna smash that. Not gonna commit to the bit. Can't can't commit that hard. It's still got coffee in it. I'm gonna. Not only am I gonna smash a thing, and I'm gonna get coffee all over my walls, and I gotta clean that up. So yeah, we're um, stunts are stunts are definitely a uh something to something to be careful with so we'll see what the what the big stun is here um anything before we get into stark treachery tonight evan hmm i guess i'm ready uh all right maybe they'll crash uh crash one of these ships today we can only hope i mean it's you know the last good ship action i think we had was when those people were zip lining from one ship to another <laughs> but other than that it's been the uh, spaceship battles have been lacking as of late i mean maybe i don't know i guess the last episode maybe there's a little bit of action but yeah it's you know give me more zip lining well no, we, you, now you got to top that they haven't topped that yet i guess is what i'm saying so we'll see if they right. can do it here um, all right, then without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into Chapter 11, Stark Treachery, right now. Hey, Sweet Feet's in the house. Dude, Sorry, Treachery. what were you saying? This is uh, the new Marvel movie, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Tony Stark has come back. They've lured Robert Downey Jr. out of his uh, self-imposed exile um, to do a version where Tony Stark turns evil. And now he's going to fight with Flash Gordon. Yep. It's the big crossover. Yeah, there's no way I was going to read any of that. Uh, here we go. This isn't the read train. Oh, there's a stunt doubles. Yeah, we talked about this last time. Because <laughs> Flash yeah, Gordon's hair is brown here. Or very obvious stunt uh. Alright, here we go. <laughs> oh. okay. All right, all okay. right. Is he swimming here? Yep, he's swimming. Look at him. I don't know if he's a lifeguard, but that's the lifeguard move right there. That's he's. Look at him. He's. That was a bad guy, and he still saved his life. God, these spaceships, man. Mm. I I really would love to see behind the scenes of them doing this model work, man. It is something to behold. 
Yeah, the that last little clip wasn't terrible. No, it was funny. It was pretty funny. I don't know if he was a lifeguard. He was an Olympic swimmer, sweet feet. But uh, I, I, I mean, I'm sure he probably had to save a few people. <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't out of the out of the territory when you're a swimmer back in the 20s and the 30s. I'm sure, you're surrounded by people who just end up in the water that don't know how to swim. Love those gas masks. Those are, uh, you know, basically space helmets, but, um, don't really need them except, I mean, do they even close the door? No. Somebody close the door. You're letting the poison gas in. <laughs> Of course, there's an antidote. Uh, we're not going to show how this antidote works. We're just going <laughs> to imply. I mean, I don't think they were allowed to necessarily show like directly people getting shots or needles injected in them. It's like a whole thing. If they've got those wings on their helmet, why do they need a spaceship? I mean, come on. What are we doing here, guys? They're just impractical. <laughs> I love that it's real, like, little fireworks sounds. Just boop, 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 boop. We'll make for the palace with our prisoners. Ming would rather lose a dozen ships than his captain. The torch was captured by Flash Gordon. But the Emperor will be compensated when he learns that we've brought Dale Arden back to him. Will they die than fall into Ming's hands again? I'd rather die. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like it's pretty hard to fall out of Ming's hands again, so... You know. Take your chances. Two of the ships shot down and the others driven off. Never mind that. I'll go no reports on Flash and Dale. The search of the castle and grounds is continuing. <laughs> no. Thank heavens you're safe. Dale and Ronald are gone. <laughs> Thank you heavens. Torch here had Dale prisoner when I grabbed him. If anything has happened to her... You better not, Gordon. <laughs> One of Ming's Why you? If Ming has her, you might need me as hostage. Broca, lock him up. Operator. Book him. See if you can contact the palace. Wait a moment. If he is Dale and Ronald prisoner, perhaps he'll make the first move. Yeah, I guess he's. Yeah, I guess he's got Dale. All right, look, look at this fashion. Let's just take a moment to take all this in. All right. I mean, not to mention just the architecture. That's a whole other show. Right. Welcome, Thong and Lady Sonia. I understand you bring us prisoners of importance. Thank you, Your Majesty. Dale Arden and Captain Ronald have been confined in separate apartments and await Your Majesty's pleasure. Wait, Please Captain Ronald? I have things to Is say that... to these two alone. I thought he was on their side. I don't know. I don't know. How... It's hard to keep track of these guys sometimes. I don't know. Well, we are expecting some stark treachery. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. I am ill-served, it seems. Sire. Who my best ships and crews destroyed. Captain Torch, my oh, he's, soldier, he's mad. counselor, well. who left in the hands of my enemies. Your Majesty has many ships and soldiers, but there's only one Dale Arden. No doubt Prince Baron mm. would be glad to exchange Captain Torch for her. What do you mean? Your Captain oh, he's mad because Captain Monotone got Arden taken? No trace of any of them. But we verified the report that one of Ming's ships did actually land at the castle during the gas raid. That settles it. I'm going after Ming. I'll go with you. <laughs> Will your highness caution our guards to watch the prisoner torch very closely? The Empress Palace calling. So Flash had plenty of time to go fix his hair and get all fixed up before they solve this problem.
<laughs> Whoa, <laughs> spooky. I like that. Prince Baron will speak to Ming, the tyrant. Uh, Baron, I see you have your allies with you. That makes it simpler. One of my ships just brought in a couple of prisoners, Dale Arden and a Captain Rano. Mm. Let me talk to him. Listen, oh yeah, I'm sure he'd love to talk to you. I'm not interested or disturbed. Coming in hot. Of a madman. Dale has not been harmed. <laughs> she will tell you so herself. Expert negotiator. I'm gonna rip your fucking head off. Flash, get me out of here. Get me out. Dale, Dale, listen to me. Don't be afraid. We'll get you out somehow. <laughs> now, if I may speak to Dr. Zarkov. Of course. And what terms do you propose to make me? Are you an exchange? Or better than that, I'll toss in Captain Ronald, who is of no importance to me. It's a trick. He'll have uh, that Yeah. Yeah, good. And Finally, how do you Flash. To make the exchange? Friend Flash is suspicious. Flash is in brain for once. any arrangements you make. But you must decide now. I'll not renew the offer. Oh, agree, Doctor. Flash, get me out of here. Get me help. He can't trick us if we arrange the terms. In any event, we have no choice. All right, all right. Make a deal. Make a deal. Uh, we will make I can hear you, bro. I'm, I'm, you're all right there. Flash, Gordon, and I will bring Captain Torch. Prepare a ship at once. Shall be done, sire. Sanja. Let's make See, a deal. See, like, she wasn't wearing that outfit when they came there, meet. right? They put that on her, right? Goodbye, my dear. I am sure we will meet again. See, that's what I'm saying. Ming's Empire, they, they know they what they're doing. Up. All right, let's take a break yeah, right there. We're going to we're gonna go ahead and take a... Take our break. They really do. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's so funny to watch when like wardrobes change or when like, cause it's like, okay, wait, why? Like why, why would they logically, <laughs> they're prisoner of war. They're going to put her in this nice, fancy new dress. Uh, you know, it's just, yeah. Ming is being, uh, <laughs> remarkably merciful in this episode. Well, it's as Flash said. We know. Yeah, they're, we they're, know what's up. We know teeing up for the Stark treachery. The Stark Stark treachery is definitely in hand. I mean, yes, and I I think um, yeah, with a widow's peak like that, that's you. Never, how can you trust somebody with a widow's peak? You should know better. I mean, with that one, when your hat is a widow's peak, that's when you should be concerned about, should I trust this guy when he, when he wants to look like the devil, you know, when he's cutting his hat to, to give him the appearance of a widow's peak. Maybe I should trust this guy. Cursed? Yeah. He's got a cursed hat. I think that hat is definitely did, did that look like a spider silk hat to you because it looked like a spider silk died of course but of still course. but still uh, definitely cursed without a doubt whatever the material obviously insect of some kind but cursed without a doubt I don't know you're not going to catch me I don't care how fine the insect leather is i just i can't sign up for a cursed hat i've already got a cursed stream on my hands i don't need a i don't need a cursed hat to add on top of one curse is enough for me thank you um i think i think you know ming seems like the guy who's got multiple curses rolling at once and he's he's managing it well i think you know it's uh you no, know, it's hard to become uh emperor of the the universe without picking up a couple of curses. Right. You're going oh yeah, that line of work it's just part of the job, right? In the job description. Must must be comfortable taking on curses. <laughs> um <laughs> comes with the territory of the universe. I mean I'd I mean, you know the universe not so much curses as it is karma but 
isn't curse isn't a curse just an amplified version of karma isn't it just karma extreme karma isn't that all a curse is yeah really that, that, that sounds right because like for a curse to like if you're gonna if somebody's gonna level a curse if that curse is gonna actually work then it has to be legitimate right but they have to be making that curse because they've been wronged and that in turn that curse is validated like if they just were trying to curse somebody because they cut in front of them in line yeah you know that's not at 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 a drop at a you know at a fast food restaurant that's not really curse worthy you know i don't think that's gonna go very yeah, you far can, you can only uh pull a curse like that if you know somebody on the inside mm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I i i just don't think that curses are i don't think they can be leveled willy-nilly i think there's definitely there's there's some feedback loops there's some well or cause and effect you know whatever you want to however you want to phrase it but i i just don't think that I don't think that Ming, uh, you know, I think Ming's got his hands full, uh, you know, with Flash Gordon alone, curses and karma. And I guess that's all Fla Flash Gordon is karma, right? You, just, you know what, Ming, for trying to be an emperor, this is what you get. Some plucky little, uh, you know, space ranger going around thwarting all your, all your plans and schemes. That's that's karma, cause I mean you know he's merciless. He's not a good guy. If if you if you at this time if at this time if you thought Ming was a good guy, you probably thought Hitler was a good guy. And that's you know that's that's um in 1940. Unfortunately, there were people in the United States who felt that way. Um, well. But you know, luckily here. Just it's... think of what. <laughs> just think of what uh, Ming's done for the economy, though. Right. Well, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's that's it's just propaganda, Evan. I can't believe you'd be fooled by by. I guess it is very convincing. You know, you. It's the uh, hat. That's what it is. It is the hat. It got, it got you. That's the the curse. The the curse of the hat. You're. Yeah, we're gonna have to deprogram you, but we'll worry about that. We'll do well that's we'll take care of that during the break. And um during this break we've got another flash we so we're I'm honestly running out of serial trailers to show during the breaks. I was like frantically that's what took me so long to get get on with Evan was like I was looking for trailers and literally I've used all the serial trailers that I could find. Uh, and so we're back on the Flash Gordon. I figured good to be retrospective since we're in the last two episodes of the serial. We might as well revisit Flash Gordon. And I think the other one is Flash Gordon Goes to Mars, which that's the trailer that we're going to see during this break is Flash Gordon Goes to Mars. So we're... Um, we're we're seeing how it how it started, how it's going, and then the the main event is how it how it ends. Unfortunately, this episode, the next episode, is all we're gonna get of Flash Gordon, and that's all that she wrote. Will be all that she wrote. We still got a little bit of time. Don't worry. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to the exciting finish, but uh. We're going to enjoy this trailer of uh, Flash Gordon Goes to Mars. And then when we come back, we'll get into the exciting conclusion of Stark Treachery. So stick around. We'll be right back. You and Dale get back in there out of range. We'll try to hold them off. 
Hurry before they get through. The clay in that wall, it seemed to come to life. It turned into a man and then ran back into the shadows. Oh, don't be silly. one of the death squadron right on our tail. Man the gun, Flash. I'll try and get him into position for you. You got him, Flash. Direct hit. King has told Flash Gordon the secret of your power. The secret of my power? He wouldn't dare. Where are you taking me? To the clay people. Look, Doc, we're heading straight into the beam. And we are back. So that was Flash Gordon Goes to Mars. And yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, pretty, pretty exciting. They had the boomerang. The boomerang. You've got to love all those. I, I'm guessing that all those were the episode, the chapter titles that were going across the screen like that. Um, you gotta love those. It seemed like, you know, some enticing titles there. Uh, as I noted to Evan, instance of for forgetfulness. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's spark some of that up. Uh, you know, sounds, <laughs> sounds pretty good. Uh, you know, and then you get your typical spaceship battles and Flash Gordon zooming around, uh, fighting Ming and doing what they do, you know. It looks like they Sorry, what, Evan? Evan, can you hear me? Uh-oh. Did we lose Evan? I hope we didn't lose Evan. No? I... Oh, we did. Well, well he'll, he'll be back in a second. It's, it's the way that it goes. It's up and down here. Actually, this is the first time in a while that my Wi-Fi has done such a thing. So... Uh, it's, you know, cycles through, but curse you Wi-Fi. You've been pretty good lately, but not now. Uh, so, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, what we're going to do is we're about to get into the exciting conclusion of Stark Treachery. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think that... As many times as Flash Gordon has been to Ming's castle, you'd think that going in and getting Dale out and honestly destroying the whole place would be pretty easy at this point for Flash. Um, Evan, can you hear me? Uh, I'm You're back. You're back. Or I thought you were back. Are you back, Evan? Oh, no, he's not back. He was, for a split second, he was back. And then he was gone again. So we'll see. It'll, eventually it'll stabilize. We'll get him back. But, um, so we're going to see if, uh, you know, this, if, if he can just come in, make one raid, destroy, you know, get Dale out first, obviously. Destroy Ming's castle. 
and you know fly off into the sunset. Okay, Evan, I think I think you're here. Are you here? I, I, I am. You're here, yes. Okay, good. I think it's stabilized out. See, uh, it's I told you. It's just it's I Evan, I don't you heard me right. Evan could hear me the whole time, right? Yeah, I I could I could hear you. Great. Perfect. Uh so Evan, Evan knows. It's but literally, you know, like I have not had trouble with my internet all week. And it's been nothing but trouble the past multiple weeks. So this is the first time in a minute. So it's, you know, unfortunate, but I'm glad you're back. Uh-oh. Did I lose? Uh, no, you're here. No, you're here. I hear you. I hear you. Don't worry. Ha! Gotcha. 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 Okay. Um. All right. But yeah. So, what do you think, Evan? Do you think that uh, Flash uh, at this point shouldn't he be able to go in here and clean up? And I mean, what has he been to Ming's castle like five times? Oh no, we lost. <laughs> this is just becoming like a terrible, terrible bit. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, that's me jinxing it. That's karma, right? Every time I'm like, oh, he's back. It's just jinx, karma, whatever you want to call it. Just get him, get him Parker. So what are you going to do? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the exciting conclusion of Stark Treachery. And Evan will, Evan will be back. Evan will pipe back in. I hate this is happening and i apologize profu profusely to evan and our audience uh evan are you with us I i'm here you're here <laughs> i i hear you so we'll we'll take that while we have it and if you've got it queued up i do all right then we're gonna get into the exciting conclusion of stark treachery right now They're coming. These god dang spaceship well, noises always let you go oh, and sure just drive me crazy. Sounded like an electrical storm all the time. So the trailer we watched, um, that was another serial, right? It came before this satisfied? one, yep. Yes. Okay. The year before, I think, 1939. I, I, I like that in that one, the they at least had more than one uh, kind of spaceship. Ah, oh, see, I didn't notice that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, here it's all the same. Quick, inside. It's not, um... <laughs> it's, it's... It's harder to tell apart who's who. It's a little frustrating sometimes. Dale, what is it? Zarkov, quickly! She's been drugged. Ming, that I would love to know what kind of pyrotechnic stuff they have to do to make all that come out of the ship like that. Zarkov, you have no yeah, and not catch it on fire. <laughs> right, right, right. Our only chance to live is that you alone bring her to me at once. Delay will be fatal. Think he's telling the truth? Yes, Flash. She's dying. I must take her back to Mings. She's dying? Ronald Barnes before I go. Ming poisoned her. Dang, he really is merciless. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I, I get what Ming's plan in all this is, though. No, I'm not sure either. I, it just seems like he wants to kill... Eventually, I mean, he doesn't even want to kill Flash Gordon because if he wanted to, he would have done it already, right? So what is his plan? Right. That's a astute question, Evan. I, I don't think he can kill Flash. I think it's like a Batman and Joker kind of thing. Like, if he kills him, then that's kind of the game. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, then he, yeah, what purpose would he have? Is, is yeah, why go on at that point with, you know, you gotta have your foil. What's the point of having all these nice cursed clothes and this uh, insect <laughs> leather hat if I don't have an arch nemesis to uh, the the rub in their face? The <laughs> then once inside with the help of Zarkov and Captain Susan, there's an abandoned tunnel, not the one we were trapped in before. No, this is on the other side of the path. I don't want to go back the there. Beneath the cabins. That is the way it's clear. <laughs> if it isn't, we'll clear it. Zarkov's rocket ship is serviced and ready. We are ready, Your Highness. Oh, no, Ron. What? Numbers won't help us on this trip. Three might succeed where more would fail. I haven't seen you them salute each other like that yet. I don't know about that. You did well to obey me and bring Dale here, Zarkov. Only I could have awakened her <gasps> from the best sleep into which I had cast her. What? I'm taking you to my daughter, Princess Zora. And as for you, Zarkov, any attempt to escape will result disastrously both for you and Dale. It's all right, Dale. We're to be the guests of the Emperor for a short time. Come, my dear. Oh my god. I mean, he didn't betray... He, the, this isn't the Stark treachery, but he has brought... He has come there willingly. But it was to cure Dale. Ah, this is pretty wild. That was... Oh. Oh. Ming discovered that he was conspiring with Prince Baron. And you? Are you suspected? The lives of all of us are in Oh, this danger. guy's on their side. So okay. Far, suspicion hasn't rested on me. You and I must contrive some means to free the prisoners and make the revolt against Ming a success. Calm learned much of the secret of Ming's power before he died. That That's like standing really mind. close. That's like invading you. my personal space close. I'm everybody in this. And there's the shots are so Dang. wide. Let's spread out a little bit, guys. I'm happy to see you. Our Flash and Baron prisoners, too? No, just Dr. Zarkov and I. The Flash will come and save us. Mm, yeah. Sure. Very, very pretty, my dear, and very optimistic. No one is going to save you. <laughs> Even rescuers could get into the palace. They could not enter this room and live. You had failed to stop Flash Gordon before, Father. Yes, but I'll not mm. fail this time, my dear. You have corrupted my guards. So I placed you in this room with an incorruptible guard. That rug will be charged with 4,000 volts of electricity. What? Oh! I had it placed there to guard my own life against treachery while I slept. <laughs> and now it is to he be said used it. to prevent rug. the escape of my This, this rug. <laughs> if you touch that rug after I leave this room, you will be instantly killed. You're grounded. That is diabot. Yeah, <laughs> grounded, literally, right? Grounded. Remember, I have warned you. <laughs> that is so diabolical. I love that. <laughs> this rug is has got four thousand volts. <laughs> it's right in front of the yeah, door, of course. Very super villain. Very hard. Very. This is the most super villain thing he's done in a minute. I mean, the other stuff is well, the most invented. Everything else has been standard. Like, oh, I got a, I got a wall of water, or I got a, I got a bomb that, whatever. Ah. Hey. All right, well, uh, let's not step on that fucking yeah, rug. All right. Dead. No. Captain Soon's the heart of the conspiracy to overthrow me. You know, we'll attempt to do something. I'm sure we'll do everything we can to make our entrance possible. <laughs> well, let's hope so. I mean, again, you guys have Sentry been here so many times. You know Good. what you're doing. What about the entrance of the deserted tunnel north of the castle? We have always considered that entrance through the old tombs were impossible, sire. It is not of any importance what you considered. We have flesh garden to deal with. Have guards to go to that tunnel. Men that you can depend upon. 
Ming is smart. He's he's trying to think like his enemy. He's got some advanced advanced warfare going on. I think he Oh god, it cut out went right as you were saying that, Evan. He said I think and then it cut out. Landing flash. We're right near the tunnel entrance. I hope Captain Sudden has been able to leave it unguarded. Have you received instructions about preparing the Earth Girl for her wedding, Lady Sonia? Yes, sire. Uh, Is it your yeah, Majesty's it's if you if you haven't been tonight? keeping track, no, all of this is taking place off time. Earth, of course. Sire. Only Dale Arden and Flash are from Earth. All right, now that cape is high fashion. Crowd, oh, your highness, Flash, this one of Captain Sudden's men. Your highness no. really finished me. Sorry, Crowd. Oh, they're the on their side. Here. He's one yeah. of us. Sudden places. Oh, you're back, Evan. Head. Sorry. You can get us into the tunnel. What were you saying? Well, the princess well and the locked up. I don't know. If that thought is still got that. Oh, I was saying. Um, so we had an official escort if we need I think Ming probably wants them to break in because otherwise how are they going to see the rug yeah it's a good point yeah it's she right. well uh, if you do something that diabolical you want like eyes on it and yeah. it's i'm sure it's a beautiful rug a lot of craftsmanship so well, it's, <laughs> does it tie the room together uh, i'm sure it does i'm sure it definitely does without a doubt I love how there's a skeleton back on a chair over there. The Carters of the North Wing. Crowd had no key for it. Ah. It's crazy they have so many people on the inside in Ming's. I guess that's why all Ming's shit fails, because so many people are traitors. Yeah, it's like out of his uh his staff how many people are we even loyal to him at this alone. point this may be a trap <laughs> not many definitely not many his own daughter is even against him <laughs> Flash, uh, oh god the rug ah! oh no <laughs> that snuck up on me. I wasn't. I totally forgot about the rug. Oh, wow. That was good, man. Whoo. Wow. Well, that was stark treachery. Uh, And I got to say, yeah, that just. I, I don't know. I should have expected. I mean, of course, like that was what was going to happen, but I just, I wasn't even thinking about it. So what do you, how do you think flash gets out of this one? Um, <laughs> that's a, it's a good question. I, I, <laughs> I wonder if they're just going to retcon it like they sometimes do. Yeah. I mean, he steps, he steps on the rug on the end of this one, but the next week he just doesn't do that. Yeah, they have done that a couple times. It's pretty infuriating because you're investing so much time and then you're just, you're going to get me on the edge of my seat for the end of one chapter, but the, the beginning of the next, you're just be like, ah, just kidding. That's not what happened. Get the fuck out of here. Come on. I am I am paying a good 50 cents to sit in here in this movie palace and for a whole day's worth of, of content, as the kids nowadays say, and I fully expect you to figure out how Flash Gordon is going to get electrocuted one week and survive the next without retconning things. Honestly, the kids did not think that way back then. They did not care. They were happy to be in the theater and out of the real world. So, maybe. 
Only... Maybe this should be uh maybe this should be Flash Gordon conquers the multiverse. Mm. We've got some parallel timelines going on. Yes, yes, I could definitely see that. That would uh that would make sense. I mean certainly Flash Gordon is a precursor for all of your favorite superhero content that you're taking in nowadays. I mean, again, Flash Gordon started as a comic strip. Back before there were comic books, there were comic strips and in the 30s. And that's how Flash Gordon got started, right? So it, it's kind of funny, but essentially he is a comic book character. I don't know if we've l talked about that or looked at it that way before. Have we? Yeah, I, I guess we maybe haven't actually brought that up. But yeah, I mean, he started as a comic strip character because that was the popular thing in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Newspapers ran. I mean, nowadays we just call them comics, but back in that day they called them comic strips because it was usually some kind of serialized story, much in the same way that comic books now are serialized stories back in that day it was just a strip that ran in a, you know syndicated in newspapers and yeah. you know little orphan annie um you know that's like and if you've everybody's seen a christmas story that's the um you know that's that's one of the big kind of like you know, is that how he gets the decoder ring and it's like drink your oval teen? There's radio stuff in there too. But I think that's the thing. Like a lot of things that were also the, the like multimedia platforms back in those days, it was crazy that like you could have a comic book strip that was then you were also adapting it into a radio show that was also being adapted into a movie serial. So you've got like kind of three main media markets, the newspaper, the movies, and the radio all covered with this one character or this one universe of, you know, characters. It's not much different yeah. from what we have now, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, uh, it, it, it's, pretty rare that i pick up a newspaper nowadays but on the, the the rare occasion that i am looking at the funnies i think some comic strips still do that same thing where right. they, they're you know it's you know kind of serialized or they're uh, you know continuing a story from strip to strip uh, and the the reason that I think that is because yeah I pick up this newspaper once in a blue moon and I read the strip and I have no idea <laughs> what is going on. I can't follow any of this. It's completely out of context. <laughs> right. Uh yeah, I mean, well, and that's the you know and the, and that's the same thing with like you know you you still have it to this day in comic strips serialized storytelling you also have you know, trying to use all the different media. I mean, you think of, again, when you think about the funny specifically, you think about all the ones that have been adapted into TV shows and movies, Dennis, the menace, peanuts, Garfield, right? All the <laughs> Mondays. I hate Mondays. Uh, you, <laughs> you just get it all. Um, you're trying to corner all those markets and you're tailoring each piece of like everything's being created for the medium that it's being made. So it's a little different each time you're tweaking it, but you understand, you know, kind of the essence of the character, whatever you're building the thing around. It's just cool the way that, you know, the uh, capitalism just doesn't change entertainment. I guess is the specific form of capitalism to which this applies. Entertainment has really not changed. It's as a business. It's all just about exploiting the main channels like multiple ways and getting your thing out there. 
What? How's that any different from what's happening now? Yeah, it's... you know. <laughs> so, uh, as far as like overarching story, um, I don't know how this serial compares to the the comic strip uh probably not well <laughs> yeah yeah i i wonder i mean do, do you know is this like an actual adaptation of like an existing story or is it just an original thing that's a very good question which i'm i will do some research on and get back to back to you specifically on that next week because i also would like to know the answer but I don't think that they like, I really do not think that they were taking the like any kind of direct storylines. I mean, if they were maybe taking a piece here or there, I don't think that they were sustaining them in the, because I, again, like we talked, like I talked about earlier, tailoring the thing for different mediums for this specifically for a film serial, What's it all centered around? The cliffhanger, right? Right. So <laughs> you so like I, I I don't know, maybe maybe that's how all the comic strips were too, but it, it might be a little different. And so I you know, and a lot of the times Universal for these serials, they're hiring writers that are churning out these scripts very fast and they're not really focused very much on continuity. They're just trying to get you to 12 episodes and it's not in, in the days, you know, literally you think about how fine tuned the storytelling is now, where if you've got 12, 16 episodes, you're going to tell a very detailed like if it's serialized, oh, you're going to cover a lot of ground. You're going to cover a lot of ground. It's going to be very intricate and very like, you're going to have a Bible, a show Bible, all this stuff. That's not how they're developing Hollywood serials in the thirties and forties. It's all right. We basically need the same thing to happen 12 times. What do we got? Yeah, it's not so much. It's not so much covering ground as it is uh, running in place. It's funny that they're called serials because they really are more episodic in nature. I think that's really, when you get down <laughs> to business, that's like the truth of it. Like they're just, yeah. it's essentially different versions of the same thing every few episodes, if not every other episode. And so you're lucky if you get overarching story elements that you can follow throughout from beginning, middle to end. Right. And that's, I, I, oh, I, I think you could, you could, uh, fairly easily just, uh, mix these episodes up. I don't think it would affect the overall plot too much. Right. Yeah. I I completely agree. As many times as they end up in and out of Ming's castle, you you <laughs> would know. You can <laughs> you can interchange those things so easily. But I mean I did there were actually a lot of good moments in tonight's episode. I really did enjoy I enjoyed um some of the touches that they were I mean it's the last two, it's the penultimate episode, right? They got a put a little bit of flair on it and i think they did i was i was impressed i had fun with it yeah, certainly i liked i liked seeing flash's uh exasperated look as he walks in with torch yeah was, he uh, did some, he was all disheveled <laughs> yeah it was some some rare emotion yeah he did you don't know i noted oh, that too crab. It's so funny that, yeah, it's so funny that you noticed that. Cause I, yeah, it was, it was, it was like, <sighs> he like the way he, yeah, you like turned and looked at him and get, <sighs> yeah, it's just, it's just for, <laughs> for a second or two, but just the look on his face. You're, I mean, yeah, that's so wild. It's, 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 you, it is something to register. And yeah, I'm, it's, I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause I, I really, I didn't know if that was just something that I was like, 
you know, is this, is this just like him just kind of being like, you know, and I was like, no, he really was like putting a lot into his performance in that moment. And it was, it's kind of like, if you're, if you're attuned to that, you notice it. And it's like, oh, wow. All right. Cause yeah, most of the time he's, he's unflappable, right? <laughs> like he's, he's doing everything and he's just like, he is unscathed. He is he is not winded you know he is always in tip-top shape he's like never letting his guard down or getting too you know but in that moment yeah it was, it was like he was actually giving a performance weird moment to do it but i'll take it you know i guess he knew it was the next to last episode he's gotta give a little more you know it's it was easy to phone it in in these days with these serials and these things you know it's it wouldn't have been too hard and i don't know i guess it was the third serial <laughs> the third flash gordon serial that buster crab did so i keep saying buster crab and I just keep thinking of Mr. Krabs. I don't know why that keeps keeps like getting into my head, but that's for some reason. And when Evan Evan said it at one point earlier, and I thought he said Mr. Krabs, and then I realized, oh no, Buster Crab, which just reminds you how weird the name of the actor who's playing Flash Gordon. It's a, it's a weird name, Buster Crab, but that's, uh, you know, back in those days, Hollywood, they probably thought that sounded pretty masculine. That was, they changed an actor's, na actor's name to make it sound more masculine. Uh, oh, thank God, Evan, you're back. You were out for a second. Crabs. What's, crabs. Crabs. Don't you think what Buster Crabs? Have you have you been thinking Mr. Crabs at all? I just it got yeah. in my head. Yeah, I don't just, know. just every time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have not made that connection until tonight. Buster Crab, Mr. Crabs. It's the syllables. That's what it is. It's it's the same syllables. Um But yeah, uh you know, I think that this being the third Flash Gordon serial he did, he's probably getting tired of it at this point. But who knows? I mean, we'll see. Maybe he can give give an emotional performance. Maybe that's he's just gearing up to do in this yeah, last he's, installment. He's saving it all up for the last episode. I think I could see him doing that. That would be... It would definitely be appreciated. Um, but we will find out next week with our very last. Wait a second. Ne wait, is that episode? That's episode 11, right? Yeah. yeah and then the next we get one is the last one. Guys, it's the end of our season has really snuck up on me, man. And I, yeah. I forget that we've got a little bit of, we got a little bit of, we got a few weeks in between when season four ends and when season five begins and you know we'll do some things there but, but yeah we're we are we are we've got one more week of flash gordon that's gonna be all she wrote and it's gonna be very sad um but we'll get through it together and we'll see if it'll be exciting this final episode is it was something about a dictator i couldn't remember the title did you see what it Doom was? Doom of the Dictator. Doom of the Dictator. Okay, so that's promising. Um, even though I know I've spoiled it before, I won't mention it again. But um, so the very last chapter of Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe, you can catch that with us next week at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
And uh, if you want to catch up on any of our previous Flash Gordon installments before that, you can go over to our YouTube page. We are over there at Screamstream Show. Yes, Silar, 8 Central. For all our Midwest uh, you know, <laughs> viewers out there, can't forget the 8 Central. Uh, but, uh, and you can also join us at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central on Friday for mm -hmm. our ninth film of season four. It's a 1978 sci fi film starring Christopher Lee entitled End of the World. So, so yes, six Pacific. Okay, we get it, Silarn. Yes, thank you. Yes. If I've got to say all three, it's gonna be it's gonna be a mouthful at some point. Nine p.m. Eastern, eight Central, six six Pacific. Um, yeah, catch us uh, for End of the World. It should be fun. I mean, Christopher Lee, the seventies. We're not getting yeah, we it. We haven't seen. We haven't seen Christopher Lee in a minute. Okay, so I have an addendum to make to our last episode. At the end of our last episode, when we were teasing End of the World, I we we said, you know, well, well we haven't seen him in a while. When was the last Christopher Lee movie we saw? How many Christopher Lee movies have we seen? We I thought it was just the one. We said it was just the one, City of the Dead. That was wrong. Uh -oh. So correction. A correction. And it's and when I when I hit myself in the head as soon as I realized it. Horror Express. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's what I actually. Uh, that's what I did. I said. Oh. <laughs> it was that realization of duh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How bad? How can we forget that one? How? Yeah, we had so much fun with that one. Yeah, I, I, just, that's the. How could we forget? It's a yeah, great I episode. Hope this, I hope this this one's as good as Horror Express. <laughs> I, I, that I'll, was a fun movie. I, I think it'll be fun, but I don't think it'll be as good as Horror Express. I could be wrong, but it's, it's the difference between an Italian horror period piece no not italian sorry a spanish horror period piece and an american b horror movie from the late 70s <laughs> you know there's a little bit of and chris uh, and, and let's just say yeah and let's just say again i think i mentioned it last time christopher lee said he got duped into being in this oh. movie so um <laughs> we'll see i think i none of that is to say that it won't be fun i think it is going to be very fun um but i think horror express probably had a little more class than end of the world i mean christopher lee brings class wherever he goes but this is still very much through and through a low budget American B movie. So, but it that comes with its own sense of fun. So I think we'll enjoy it. I think we will have a lot of fun. And it'll be our third Christopher Lee movie this stream. It has been a minute though. It's been since season two. We didn't have a Christopher Lee movie in season three, unfortunately. You got to Got to spread it. I don't know how many. I, don't, I think he maybe has a couple more. But we're uh, we're getting them out of the way early. I think, unfortunately. So you know, we'll we'll scrounge around and see what other public domain Christopher Lee movies we can find. Satanic rites of Dracula is a whole messy thing. I don't know if I'll get into it. It's it should be public domain, but. Warner Brothers also says it's not, even though it is. So it's a, it's a whole thing. It does have titties, Silarn. Yes, that's true. Um, I just don't know if I can. It's technically public domain, but you, but Warner Brothers is trying to say that they've reclaimed it, and I don't know if that's true. No, Silarn. No, it's no. Yes, it's it. They keep it. They keep it a solid R. They weren't going for X. 
They weren't trying to make an X-rated Dracula movie. They left that, I think, up to porno professionals at some point um, in the 70s, you know. But yeah, Satanic Rites of Dracula, uh, for I think for most people that try to show it, I think Warner Brothers gives them a hard time. So uh, we may try to do it, but I really, I've gone so, I've gone through, through so many copyright battles already. I've just, Evan, you're back with us. I just, I just can't. I'm worn out. I'm, I'm all battle scarred from all my, we finally, uh, by the way, update, we got our, uh, we got our strike lifted, our community guideline strike lifted off of YouTube uh just a few oh, days good. ago i don't think i'll stream this week though to youtube because <laughs> because i feel like this movie will get flagged even though it is public domain they'll you know the whole reason the last thing got taken down was because it was public domain they tried to say it wasn't and the same thing will probably happen with that movie because it's a newer movie it tends to happen more with the newer movies so what are you gonna do? Uh, we'll probably go to YouTube for our season finale, and then for the start of season five, uh, we'll we'll try to get back on YouTube full time. So we'll ease into it. Don't worry. If uh, Twitch is a little hard to get acclimated to or signed up for, we'll we'll get we'll mosey on over to YouTube again until we inevitably get another claim that I have to fight. And if, if they screw me again and don't let me submit a claim, then, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But until then, catch us on Wednesday, on this Friday. Uh, check us out over on all the socials at Scream Stream Show. Uh, you can find me on the socials at Spakenstein, of course. Um, you can find Evan on the socials at haha JK. Evan doesn't have a social. Uh, and uh, at, at Gmail at Gmail dot com, um slash hotmail dot com, and uh, yeah, uh. We do have a Gmail, but that's um, for any inquiries, uh, screamstreamshow at gmail.com, obviously. Um, anything before we sign off tonight, Evan? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll, uh, let, let's wrap this up. I've got got to go see a tailor about some bug leather pants. Mm, well, well uh, until next week and Evan's got his pants fitted. Sweet screams, everybody. And to all a good fright.